Get Into Gate, episode 46, talking Stargate SG-1. This is the Get Into Gate team. My name is Mitch. Joining me, as always, Matty. Yo. Brendan. Bumblebee Tuna. <laughs> Welcome. And Reese. Is that the red or the white? <laughs> I can never remember that. The well, white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New England clam chowder. We are talking Stargate SG-1, the three of us, Matty, Brennan, and myself, Mitch, long-term Stargate SG-1 fans. Reese, he's new to the show. These are all the first time that he's watching these episodes. We're here to get a bit of a mixed review of the show from long-term fans and a first timer watching it 20 years after it was on. We're talking episode two of season three, Seth. Now, uh, what we like to do in Get In The Gate is go back to the DVD synopsis and see what kind of gold it has for us. And for Seth, it describes as... When SG-1 hunts for a good lord living on Earth, they discover this powerful alien in the form of a religious leader with a heavily armed cult following. O'Neill faces off with both government agents and the cult in a fiery clash that may destroy them all. I do feel like there were more yeah. people involved than O'Neill, but I'm glad he's getting some credit because he had a lot of work to do in this Well, his episode. name's on the top of the DVD That's there. true. Yeah, executive yeah, producer I mean, gets whatever yeah, he when, wants. When your name's above the title, you really need more credit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not getting enough. Reese, last week, Matty teased this episode. We finally got rid of Hathor last week, mm. and he said, guess what? Next week, maybe another Hathor because it's described... The episode is titled simply after the name of the well, lead we, we villain. Talk, we talk about tropes about how, you know, and, and certain repeating things. Daniel sleeping with women, um, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, glide, like re- recurring shots and that sort of stuff. And there's a recurring theme here in Stargate where if an episode is named after Gwauld, it's usually pretty shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> but I mean, before There's we, only two you know... examples that I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, before we cloud your judgment, Reese, you yeah. know, and I mean, feel free to think whatever you want, mate. What did, uh, what did you make of Seth? You know, I, I really found this episode pretty interesting because I think it's the first time that we've seen two all well, government agencies that come face to face with SG-1 and, and as sort of that top secret, mm. hey, I know that you're a secret government agency, but we're even more secret than you. Yeah. Well, I've got top clearance. Yeah, well, it's not good enough. Yeah. Like, yeah. I thought like, that... Your clearance isn't high enough to even know what our letters stand yeah. for. Yeah. <laughs> I, f- I feel when I re-watch episodes, I go, oh, Seth, whatever. But then when you sit down and you watch it, you pick up on little things like that, either if it's the humour or it is little nuances that you're like, mm. oh yeah, I really like that what they've done in that scene. Yeah, it was mm. it wasn't as bad as I remember it being. Every time yeah. I, I go through the DVDs and I think, oh, I'm gonna skip Seth. I feel like like Reese was saying, I think it's a really good premise and idea. Mm. I think just the execution was a little bit off. Yeah, in, yeah. in certain areas, but mm. the idea of cult and it's kind of like what we spoke about in First Commandment. How like wouldn't it have been better if it was a Gua Wold? instead of the yeah. Jonas guy mm. convincing people to worship him as a god without implanting them with gold, and that's kind yeah. of what Seth's done. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So it's we, we got the idea we had, but yeah, I think the execution... Yeah, maybe that's the first commandment bit. part two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just better. Yeah, yeah but better. Just redoing season one better. It's, yeah. it's, it's season two all over again. I actually don't remember this episode being bad. I don't think about that when I do think about this episode. I actually quite... I felt that way as the episode went on. I think towards the end, certainly the last third, maybe mm. I think is uh, is like oh, yeah, oh, then, I didn't didn't then reach crawling around the compound in the bushes and stuff is great. Yeah, once cool they're in shit. the compound, mm. it's like yeah, oh, would have thought so, buddy. But yeah, that's why I think this is one of those episodes where I, I think of Reese. You know, when it's a, a really cool Tilk episode or something crazy like Secrets. You know, where we get a real key moment. You know, or the Thor reveal last season. Mm. And this, a system lord has been here for thousands of years. We've mm. been watching this show for just over two seasons worth. Yeah. And there's been a system lord here the whole and, time. And not We've f- had Gould nearly destroy the Earth. There's been a system lord here the whole yeah. f- time. And not frozen like Hathor, like active yes. like the whole time. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Because yeah. that's how it started. Hey, like Jacob Carter came through and he's like on a gold hunt or something. Or mm. well, they obviously didn't know anything about it because Jacob told them. Yeah. But then Daniel started rattling off all these... All these different system lords. No, well, they brought in the the gold family tree, yeah, which hologram. is like a little hologram pyramid. Ah, thing. that's right, yeah. And it, and it, for some reason, it shows Hathor and Seth on the top of the gold food chain, mm. and they haven't been around for f- one to three thousand years. Yeah. So I don't know why they're on top. <laughs> yeah, like Hathor's whole premise in literally the previous episode is she's out of the loop. 
Yeah. So she's done this whole yeah. big thing to try yeah. and figure out what the state of the universe is like again so she can see. She out. has all these Jafar mm. but somehow gets killed by Jack who throws her into an ice bath. Mm. Anyway, cryo freeze. <laughs> We're, we've passed that episode. Let's <laughs> move on. It's just the same thing. I just find, found it weird how Jacob's like, oh, I heard you killed Hathor. Mm. I'm like, why is that such a big deal? She was a nobody. Mm. Yeah. It hasn't been yeah. for so long. Yeah. Oh, why, why are you so impressed by that? Oh, because she was a system lord. It's mm. like, well, and then they say, "Oh, there's he like." You should have gone. Uh, I heard she had killed Hathor and one of her operatives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so forgotten. Yeah. That poor woman. Yeah, yeah. So it's, helpful. It's all right, leave. Then, yeah, so helpful. And then the poor actress, even after death, like so helpful. <laughs> the poor Came actress went on to be in, um, like, season two of Supernatural as one of the most oh, hated characters in that entire show. She ran the Roadhouse. It was her and her oh, daughter. Was that her? Yeah, yeah that's um, Ellen. Ellen, yeah. yeah. And I, I love that actress because I just love that sort of raspy, deep voice she's got. Yeah. And, and I loved Ellen as a character in, in yeah, Supernatural. Yeah, I didn't mind um, But that whole sort of plot of the roadhouse of Ellen and Joe in season two of Supernatural is one of the most hated subplots. I was yeah. like, that poor actress just can't cop it. <laughs> yeah. Great. Like, so he was on. He was basically on Earth because he tried to overthrow Ra and they, everyone just started hating him. Oh, yeah. And basically. I, yeah, and I think because they buried the gate. Yeah, so obviously he's got cut off from the gate thousands of years ago. Mm. Doesn't have a backup ship hiding anywhere. Yeah. Mm. Which is ironic, given what we find out in season five with, um, uh, what's the name? Cyrus. Yeah. What's the name? Is it the, the Cure or? The Curse. I left out the S. It's not the Cure. The uh, Curse. Yes. The curse. You left out the S. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. It's in her head. You know, snake yeah. Head. So Seth has just kind of been trapped here and obviously just. I, the the one thing I found weird is they always kind of we've always had to rely on sarcophaguses in the past for Goa World long life, mm. but obviously Seth has just been jumping from body to body because he hasn't been able to stop the body from aging. Okay, right. yeah, but the serpent itself is obviously aging because that's what I was going to bring up because they actually I was going to say they're, they're establishing you know some canon sort of stuff here because they did mention that I think it was Jacob he said oh well if he swapped hosts just every 400 years or so and I'm like okay so 400 Hold up. is is that the is that the number but because I, I immediately thought of Ra from the film now I know that you know the TV show takes liberties with what the the film set up, but still mm. that idea in Apophis and things. I'm like they've had their host for more than 400 years, but you're right, they've had a sarcophagus. So yeah. I didn't actually consider that. I just wouldn't because they have genetic memory. Wouldn't they know how to create a sarcophagus? Well, do they have the tech? It's crystal technology. How mm. do you find that on Earth? I suppose so. And that's the weird thing. That's like, well, he's got some Guol tech. He's got yeah, the little it. bombs. Well. We'll get to that in a minute, but um, he's got zats, like he's armed his guys with zats, yeah. so he should be able to. So many. He should, oh, hey. he should what be was he doing? To, which oh, is weird because that's the was one. Was he dressed like Neo when he when he got left on Earth? Like just <laughs> his whole trench coat just yeah. full of weapons. <laughs> but I find it, I found it weird though. That's the one weapon that can make his followers stop following him. <laughs> yes. all and that's him. what he arms yeah. them with. I'm yeah. going to arm you with the one piece of technology I have that will cure you from my hole. Yeah. <laughs> Don't accidentally shoot yourself. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Um, do? <laughs> <laughs> But it's like, but there's this, <laughs> for the thousands of years he was there, well, we find it in the curse. There's Google technology in Egypt he could have been using. Yeah. He could have, you know, scanned and found Hathor's sarcophagus in Peru, yeah. Peru wherever it was. So there's all this Google technology that's been scattered around Earth for thousands of years, and he's just been too lazy to go and find it. Well, that's, that's what I wrote down. Lack well, of ambition. He's yeah. in hiding. Because well, from but how, from how what? is he staying alive? Like well, for a, okay, let's put it this way. So when was the gate buried? Three thousand years ago, a, a million thousand, centuries, a million, no, a million five, gazillion years, five thousand. Because remember in Orpheus, it's three thousand BC, he says three thousand BC. Yeah. yeah. So for five thousand years, he's been on Earth. So even if he was in hiding, five thousand years will give you such a crick in the neck. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what oh. the hell is this? I was going to say, that's two Robin Williams from you. One Mrs. Doubtfire and one Aladdin. <laughs> but I, I just found his lack of ambition interesting because even in the last thousand years, he has this mind control mechanism which will basically make anyone follow him, even SG-1. Mm. So at some point, even let's just let's get creative. Just say in the last 20 to 50 years, he could have been friends with every single president or even been president. If he wanted to, yeah, but he's in hiding from yeah, who? Yeah, that was he's not thing. from the system lords. The system the, lords want to kill him. The planet's lost. Yeah, but yeah. M- maybe he's just like, look, I'm going to keep things low key. 
I'm going to have a harem of like 20 bitches that I'll refresh every 15 years to keep that going. <laughs> yeah. I'll have my eunuchs there so that they can't touch them, but they'll be able to like, you know, make my food and protect me and all that sort of stuff. He's living off the grid. Yeah. It's, it's That's the, for 5,000 it's, it's the years. Gua Dude. It's the Goa world equivalent of like if, um, li- li- living in a shipping container. It's like he's got the <laughs> yeah. essentials. He's just not living life. If he takes over the world, what's he going to do? Mm. He, he can't attack the Goa world planets. He can't do it. Like what he's trying to do I is mean, he'd be up- like the king. Yeah, and that's what he is yeah, in his little sanctuary yeah. there. But, yeah, no, he, but could, like, he would have had no so much way more. It's no. limited. Oh, I see. I wrote but that was it's... one of my final notes in this. I'm like, he should be like when you start seeing the way that he talks to his peers and the language, the the dialogue that the writer's given with this one we didn't mention before, written by Jonathan Glasner and directed by uh, William uh, Corcoran, who had, who had a couple episodes last season. But Glasner's uh, had yeah, a, a fair uh, bit to do. He wrote uh, one false step. Okay. Ooh. Well, like it wasn't the worst we'll episode that. <laughs> of that season. That was, that, was his, that was his first episode. What did you say, Maddie? This is I'm, his last episode. I'm nothing this episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that he should be the most self indulgent Gould system lord or Gould that yeah. we have ever met because all of them, because they infight so much. They, they 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 quest for power, but they've also got to deal with all the other dickheads mm. in 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 their race. And we yeah. find He's that in later been... seasons, that's that's one of the problems with why the Gould haven't taken over the universe. And there's people like you know the Nox and and the Asgard and all that stuff. If they worked together and stopped infighting, they could take over the yeah. universe. Yeah, I just I don't think I I've ever had this problem before, but I absolutely agree with Brennan. Is they they could have played with this so much better and had mm. so much more fun with this if they just made him neck level sort of yeah. up himself you know yeah, and he, like just like a, to- a like a fucking really, house really like cool idea execution yeah. not so great yeah the, I, just, I mean i do still like it but it's just like man that this episode yeah. could have yeah. been really cool they're such egomaniacs that i just couldn't cop him just happy with a house full of people mm. when he could have a world mm. uh, an entire world worshipping him yeah. Especially a thousand years ago when people actually believed in all that shit. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, you know, in the Middle Ages and stuff, he yeah. could have just been. He could have owned it. Massive. Literally just, king of the yeah. world. Like, if they would have actually had a little bit more fun in the fact that, like, he was Hannibal or something like that, you know, yeah. or these, these great conquerors, well, you know, they like. They touch on that. They touched on different names of gods and different sort of yeah. things throughout the ages. Yeah. And Daniel managed to magically, you know, connect the dots and go, <laughs> yeah. well, he's been all of those people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was kind of cool because you kind of. When Daniel's doing all that, I'm like, and Jack goes, you actually found the snake in the head or whatever he said. And then yeah. that's pretty cool, actually. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I had a laugh that you just saying, oh, you know, a thousand years ago, they believed in that shit. Like when they were just trying to piece it all together and they said, well, look, how do, you know, people amass great followers and, and you know, tilt false religion. Yeah. And then, and then, and then <laughs> Daniel turns around and says, it, it shrinks the proverbial haystack quite considerably to find him. And I'm like... Not really. <laughs> There's lots of religions out there that yeah. people yeah. believe he and have Jesus. absolutely yeah, no proof. That. He was yeah. Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah. He rose from the dead. That. Yeah. There's well, a lot of cults out there, so it's you know, totally. His gold healed him after his did crucified. Anyone, did anyone <laughs> recognize <laughs> the actor playing Seth? Seth MacFarlane. No. <laughs> Seth Rogen. <laughs> Seth Green. <laughs> Any the, other sets um, out there? I think that's all the sets. <laughs> all the good sets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, I'm pretty sure that's it. There's that um, other Seth on the late show and no one cares about. Oh, don't Myers. Care. No. That's, yeah, that's oh, it. Oh, yep. yeah. I was going to say Grace Brothers. I was going to say James Corden. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, no, the guy, the, the actor that plays Seth is the same guy that played Daniel's father in Gamekeeper. The guy that kept getting crushed by the... Oh, yeah. Get the, the f*** out of here. Wow. Same really? actor. Yep. I can kind of see that wow. now, actually. I'm mm, fixing yeah. it. Wow. They, just, they gave him, like, the evil guy mustache, goatee yeah. thing, and they're like, yeah, I don't want to recognise him. He'll be fine. Well, it worked. Yeah. The other thing that I thought they could have not so much expanded on, but actually used because they set it up at the start of the episode... There's no reason Seth couldn't have killed Jack, Sam, and Daniel himself when he's like, take them away and kill them, you know, towards mm. the end mm. when he realizes that, you it's know... It's the they're... Bond villain thing. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, but... No, I'm going to yeah. just leave them up. alone yeah. with one inept guard and assume it all went to plan. What? <laughs> <laughs> and see, I would have been fine with that if they didn't set him up in, in the, you know, the, the PowerPoint presentation in, in Daniel's uh, little <laughs> studio and say, look at all these examples of they found his followers and they all slit their own throats and he mm. wasn't there. It's like, he's been making people kill themselves yeah. left, right, and center, yet three people that actually pose a threat to him they weren't mm. there as his followers he's like okay yeah. someone else take them away and, and kill them and I'm like but oh, f- oh come on do you know that's I, just so I weak yeah. what what was more far-fetched for me is that how they're like 
Oh, he's been all, all over the world, but now he's in Seattle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How convenient. That's, that's the power seat of the entire planet. Yes. Well, okay, more to what Brennan was saying before. I, I I didn't note this. I'd forgotten about it, but I was thinking during the episode, wouldn't it be cool to have seen him like take over some kind of like, Eastern European country, like some small war-torn place mm. somewhere? Mm, that that racist? We- Belgium. No, but you know, like where they do base a lot of these, you know, where American like soldiers go in to solve problems, like mm, have yeah. somewhere where there is a dictator somewhere, some or some corrupt government guy that's overthrown the government or something. Saudi I don't Arabia, know. close to Egypt, Kosovo. Sure, like anything like that where they could have where actually had, was last, an, last, last month, last week. had an Earth-based Across episode. <laughs> but I feel like they could have used the same forest settings that they always use, yeah. but actually go, oh, this is a country, you know, southwest of Russia, you yeah. know, and that he is actually taken over a small country no, do you know that you... would have been cool and then you could help some like European father that's been camped out in his car no, what I really month. hope for and what would be <laughs> yeah. the, the ultimate across the universe is I'd love to look up this guy's IMDB and I, I just hope and pray like he was an extra in the background of the coffee shop on an episode of Frasier like in, <laughs> in Seattle, in Seattle. In Seattle. <laughs> so it's like Seth has gone for coffee in Seattle, and then suddenly, <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> Frasier, <laughs> Frasier and the car, Stargate <laughs> are actually in the same universe. And oh, he's like, oh my god! Good. But what was the deal with that dad, man? Like he's just camped out the front of that place forever. Yeah, I feel like we didn't need ho- that. In I'm hoping no. to catch a no, glint in my son. I didn't plot. To be honest, well, like, the I didn't only, really mind it. What I can, what I can, from what I can tell is that he, the whole reason he was there was to spill the coffee in the tent and go, yeah. hey, mm. um, Sam's dad, you should make up with your son. And see, see us. Yeah. When he's, the way that he <laughs> spilled that coffee, there's, there's two moments now that I think about that scene. I'm just going to just say it was just, just poor acting because that, like, the way that he <laughs> I'm fit, say it. Right, <laughs> I'm going to no, so, say it. So it's right. now it's official. <laughs> Sue me. No, uh, is it he, the way that he spilled that, I thought, oh, that's right, he steals something. Like, yeah. he's yeah. going yeah. to steal yeah. a weapon or he's going to steal some info or, or an earpiece or something. He just, yeah. oh, whoa, whammy. Um, <laughs> whammy, <laughs> whammy, whammy, whammy. Grab, <laughs> grab Jacob's left breast. Right? And he's like, oh, yeah, fathers. And, and Teal's like, do not, fathers not love their children. I'm like, uh, this. The, you're right. That is why he is here. Yeah. I feel like the the scene at the start where he goes, "My son's in there," and you see Dude. Jacob go, "Oh yeah, right, uh, my son." Blah blah blah. Then at the end, and mm. he reunites, yeah. and that's another mm. marker, another key for Jacob. Like I and think you we need never that. see Sam's brother again. <laughs> 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 but the other the other part in that scene was he came in to get a cup of coffee. Now when he he, he spilt it, I thought he was fake spilling it. No, he wasn't. He was. Just yeah. he just poorly spilt it, but then <laughs> he when he went, he went to leave, right? <laughs> he went to leave. He went to put the coffee down next yeah. to the coffee maker. And he goes, "Oh, I guess I'll leave you guys," yeah. and takes the coffee with him. And I think the actor genuinely turned around and go, "I'm going to put this." Oh no, hang on, that's why I came in yeah. here. Yeah. Motivation, 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 motivation. Because he's like, "I got to put it down for the next uh, Cut, next yeah. table." Yeah. <laughs> it's like, "No, you Reset. nailed that one." Really, yeah. really. But when he when I first saw him at the start, I'm like, "Oh, he's definitely in on it." Like he's just ah. a he's a he's a watchman out the front. He's gonna kill someone here. Ooh, I thought for be sure. I thought for sure that's what. Or that he was Seth, and he's like that would have been cool. Saw them coming. I sensed them coming, and yeah. he's just like trying to help them get in. Inverted commas. Yeah. But no, cool. turns out he's just some dad. Just some yeah. exposition. What I thought was um, <laughs> Colonel <some laughs> backstory. Really funny was there's so that is. there's that scene where like they all ring in and start zadding all the people to try and save yes, them. Yes, oh. yes, yes. It's yes. like there's, I there's, that down, ten, there's, yes, I don't know. there's ten people there. There's three of them with <laughs> yes. zats. So, two, two zats each. One or two of those people never got up. Because surely yeah. someone yeah. got hit twice by Zap. I'm like, Definitely. how do they go? And they go, okay, if there's 10, I'm going to take the two yeah. on the right the and three one of on the them, left. The three of them have two Zats each, and there's 10 servants of Seth, and not one of them shot twice. Yeah. And I I replayed the sound effect a few times, and there's only five shots. Yeah, right. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, it's... they would have like, oh, simultan- yeah. simultaneous. Yeah. I'd forgotten about that. I can only imagine <laughs> like, that... Calm down. What are you, a Trekkie? <laughs> yeah. I can only imagine that 10 or 15 years ago, the last time I actually watched this episode, I just thought that looked really goddamn cool. Yeah. And they just yeah. bust in, yeah. double barreling, and just... I'm uh, like, Whoa, that looks awesome. Now I'm like, been how just... did you not kill half those people? Yeah. So good if the dad at the front comes in and goes, where's my son? Oh, we disintegrated him. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. He's to... Oh, he's, that was your he's son? He's nowhere to be found. Whoops. <laughs> um, and it's funny, the, the whole ticking clock at the end of the episode was there was one of those um, Gould ball bomb things mm. that was going to blow everything up. But there's a, it's a plot point in the season one finale 
where Braytac knows nothing about. He's like, no, no, they, they're just flash grenades that blind everybody and, and get everyone in. Mm. And Braytac was impressed by the grenades, crude but effective. There's <laughs> yeah. that whole thing. <laughs> but now suddenly these grenades can blow, sh- blow shit up because plot. Yeah. And I was like, oh, if you're going to crux the whole episode, but we've all got to get out before this bomb goes off, but Ghoul don't have bombs. So it's like... Yeah, you can... Oh. You can I don't, the only thing I could say is that, like we said before, he didn't have the technology and he's just using the Earth-based technology now to That's it, but encompass. just have, have him using C4. Why yeah. Why use the yeah, Ghoul yeah. ball For shock sure. grenade mm. that's been established as a shock grenade? Why didn't he just have C4? He's been saving everywhere. it for 5,000 years. Well, maybe, maybe yeah. it's got different settings in it. I'll yeah. tell you what, he's, he's done well to cut those well, no, bloody transporter rings around with him for 5,000 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I found it funny too because... When I think it was Jack and Tilt came out, they were the last ones out before the bomb went off. Mm. And then as the the rings came down, they were climbing out from under the ring. At one point, Jack was trying to get under the last ring. And then the bomb goes off and then the rings explode too. Oh. But it was like, it was seemed to be just encompassing the rings only. Mm. Mm. I'm like, oh, that was just too convenient. Yeah. That whole, actually, that whole last scene under underground in the, in that, in the tunnel there, it was just really weirdly edited, like yeah. poorly edited, yeah. because there was that moment where I think O'Neill yelled out to Carter, he goes, they're down here, he's back here, or whatever, you yeah. know, when they're looking and they're just de-hooding people. Yeah. And then, there's the, you one, know, the there's one where... guy in a hood who should be escaping, but he's, you know, got his face planted up against the wall and he's not moving. Yeah, yeah he's that fine. could possibly be him. He's scared, yeah. not sus. Yeah. And... It reminded me of the scene where they're pulling the hoods off, it reminded me of Home Alone 2, and... <laughs> I was just flicking off the beanies. Brand <laughs> children. For the kid. Come here. <laughs> and I think then they have Jacob and, and they sort of sense each other or whatever. And then he just, you know, like Jacob's yeah. so goddamn slow. And then Seth, you know, uses the force punch yeah. on him, basically. And then he's then he runs off. Well, not he runs. He walks away. And then Sam's like, oh, my God, I'll help you. No, no, I'll be right. I'll be right. Wear this. I don't think I can. You must believe in yourself. You have the power in you. And I'm like, yeah. why aren't you yelling for someone to stop that? Yeah. He's yeah. running away. Where is Jack in that moment? Why is he not running towards Carter? Why was Carter not like, I I just felt yeah. like it was really poorly edited because now they they were close, then they're further apart. And now there's no one there. Whereas before there was a ton of extras around. It was yeah. very strange. Like I we just, all got to the right cl- you know, climax. I just found it was weird. Mr. Worldwide. Because she picks up the, the ribbon device. Which was just laying there, and that thing takes a while to put on. You got to slide yeah. your hand mm-hmm. in, and there's five <laughs> finger attachments you got to put on, mm. and, and then to, concentrate. You'd have to readjust once you sort of got those finger bits on. Then you'd have to yeah. readjust the and other then part. Slide it back <laughs> up. <laughs> like it takes, it takes a while. <laughs> and then she just it's hammers like a, him into the ground. Like I'm like, a, like a I, hand bra. I feel, I feel like he was already safely on the ground. Yeah, and didn't necessarily need to kill him. Yeah, like, no. And I was surprised well, they did kill him. What you did, can kill him. What Why not? Jacob... I mean, great, but... And we never saw Seth again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But all she did was, like, punch his ass into the ground. Like, why yeah. did that kill him? Honestly, why? Because yeah. he, he's dead. And I'm like, really? Like, Re- why? Renal failure. Renal failure. <laughs> yeah. I wanted... Bled, bled I wanted, out the ass. I wanted Jacob to pull out his old trusty uh, transphase eradication oh. rod yeah. and just explode the bastard. Like, yeah. Come on. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was pretty underwhelming. Yeah. Hail Dorothy. Yeah, yeah but that that's good. two good old system lords in two weeks. Yeah, boom, good boom. Call. Tick, tick. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, useless ones. Next like, week. Yeah. We're working our way up the <laughs> Try line. and get yeah. our third. Did, um... What does ATF stand for, by the way? Pause. <laughs> Aren't there, for sure. uh, at least there's something <laughs> for sure. tobacco and firearms? <laughs> Oh, like yeah. alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Oh, something. Is yeah. Or is it like? Really? Is it, no, is there an two A? of those are legal? <laughs> Three of those are legal. I, no, 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 here it yeah. is. It's from the definition 20s. of the ATF is the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Firearms, yeah. There you go. All right. Wow. Well. Yeah. Because that's why uh, he had explosives or weird firearms. Or yeah. Something. Captain Captain Mustache, the ATF guy, actually comes back in season seven's Heroes. He's the um, attaché oh, okay. to the the group that comes into right. the SGC. He's the the attaché there. So um, a different character. Different character. Yeah, he's actually part of kind of he's part of the air force. He's like a. Oh yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's like a, a captain. I didn't mind him in that. Yeah, yeah in heroes, he's amazing. He's yeah, amazing. I must have remembered him actually because mm. I saw his face and I'm like, yeah. oh, I like this guy. But I'm, I, I think but I recognise him from other I, stuff as well. What I find well. really interesting is it's like when he gets told to stand down and and let the other team take control, you've got Colonel O'Neill, and yeah. then you've got General Carter. Yeah. But every time he walks in the room, he talks directly to Jack and he ignores the general in the room. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's It's that... like he goes, oh, you got an insubordinate 
yeah. Colonel there. Oh, yeah, that's so good. And it's not like, insubordinate to me. And yes, technically, <laughs> technically Jacob. Just to you, so I don't have yeah. to be. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's sick in this, Jacob. I yeah. really dug him. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. awesome. But, like, technically, Jacob is retired, but it's like, well, well, if, he, if he said that, then it's like, well, why are you here? If you're a retired general, then yeah, then you've got no no pull here. Why are you here? So it was a weird. I just found that that whole. Kind of thing. I, I was glad to see them go somewhere, see another government agency there. They had yeah. a clash. They you know called the president. So sort of like yeah. I liked all that, but that just seemed to take up. I want to say ten minutes of the episode. Yeah. Like that's a quarter of your fine, screen time, guys. Who's got jurisdiction? Like, like Maddie said, once you're in Seth's house, it's. Dull. Yeah. yeah, I feel bad. I've been just been ripping on this episode, well, but I actually I came into it thinking I liked it. I left I th- watching it going, look, I liked there it. Is, but there is one shining, glorious piece of amazingness. <laughs> yep. Just ten out of ten. Just this one moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. What is it? <laughs> one one moment in this episode, and you you all know what it is. Because the creature represents Satesh, the helmets of the Satesh guard have continued to be the source of many jokes among the Jaffa. <laughs> Jaffa jokes. Jaffa. Let's hear one of them. I shall attempt to translate one on you. <laughs> this is the best. A serpent guard, a horse guard, and a satesh guard meet on a neutral planet. It is a tense moment. The serpent guard's eyes glow. The horse guard's beak glistens. The satesh guard's nose trips. <laughs> oh, he's lost he's, it. I've made a terrible, terrible mistake. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, Daniel. Well oh done. yeah. And Daniel's told heaps of jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and just the just the face acting there by Chris Judge when he has to sort of come down. For, he's got a yeah. giant face and a giant smile, yeah. and just how yeah. that came down in yeah. like ten percent increments to just being that. <laughs> <laughs> just robotic Dead face. Yeah. Horrible, he usually has horrible. Mistake. So good. <laughs> yeah. So good. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. okay. In that scene, while they were going through the computer stuff, I know we we're talking about it before. One thing I did pick up it was in the background, sort of out of focus, but for mm. whatever reason, I was looking at it. There is a picture of Sharae on Daniel's desk, like yeah. a portrait shot. Where the f- did that come right. from? There's no f- studio yeah. on Abydos. I mean, okay, yeah, we can joke. No, they, they, like, he creepily, when he met her during the film, they had a camera. He's like, can I photograph you? But beyond that, she's got kidnapped before yeah. Earth made more contact yeah. with and Abydos. It's not, and it's not like that's just a, a screen grab of, like, him with his camcorder from, like, when they were filming no. the cartoon. No. So that's, like, professionally lit. Yeah. And she's looking, you know. Or a candid, like, he's walking on AF. her, like, ma- washing the dishes. He's like, hey, Sharae, she's turned around, a little smiled, click. That's what that shot was. <laughs> that shot makes it, it makes, it, well, it kind of makes sense, the fact that you've got a picture of your wife there, yet every time you go off world, yeah, you, you find someone else, else to you poke. Know, but. <laughs> I find I reckon it's not a prop. I reckon it's just his real desk in real life. You're that's right. his real missus. <laughs> that's his real wife. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, she needs some work. Let's put her in, yeah. the, in the back. Yeah. Of the just back. remind everyone. She might get here. a modelling gig out of the back. Yeah, of she's like the Superman <laughs> reference in Seinfeld. She's <laughs> always there. Hey, um, I teased last week about um, Brendan played some of the um, the amazing special features. From the the DVD disc that this oh, comes yeah. from. Oh. Now, Reese, oh, that's what I'm disappointed about. Is you're watching um, on streaming services, aren't you? Like mm. Stan and Netflix and that sort of stuff. Yeah. I almost want to give you the DVDs so that you can watch some of these special features because my god, they are glorious. <laughs> I grabbed a couple of other bits from from not the special feature that Brennan used last week, but the 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 other one, the featurette. The featurette. Yeah. And I cut together. It's obviously like it's it's SG one doing pieces to camera. Talking about how much fun they have, just because they're all best friends working on the show, because they're trying to sell it. Yeah. So, um, just, oh, no. just have just, a listen. Yeah, just have a listen to this. What's it like to work with Richard Dean Anderson? We've wasted far too much pause, editing pause footage pause because we've been screwing around. Go back, go back. So that first voice, that's that's Amanda tapping, putting on a funny voice. What's it like to work what? with Richard Dean Anderson? Oh, got me. Yeah, I was got <laughs> when I saw her face moving and that Why coming is- out. I'm like. Yeah. What? <laughs> Why is Fran Drescher? <laughs> <laughs> it's what's it like, what's to, it work like to work with Richard Dean Anderson? We've wasted far too much editing footage because we've been screwing around too much. But in the end, it still leads to a really positive environment, smile, really no, good work. Yeah. It's, really it's a really good. Yeah, thing. I'd go through the Stargate. I'd like things to be in line when yeah. you know you did step through that wall of water. Because can you imagine it was just like a brick wall on the other side? Kind of messy. Kind of messy. I think when you when you use situations on a parallel world that mirror situations on Earth, then maybe that make people stop and think about the wars we fight and what they're for, and the way we treat people 
and what is the result of how we interact with people. Yeah. This should be a show that entertains and that allows people to think beyond what they normally think about. We're going to tell stories, the most intriguing, um, <laughs> not sounds scripted, bored. Uh, yeah, philosophical, sounds bored. poignant stories, interesting, adventurous Line. stories that we can find. We've got to win. Join Richard food. Dean Anderson okay. as he continues to lead the way on the greatest journey of all time, <laughs> Stargate SG-1. Captain Superlative. Now, um, no, have I you feel seen like Lord of the Rings? That that's, <laughs> that's, a different, that's a different voiceover guy. they got two different voiceover guys. Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. When you play them yeah. back to back, it's two different voiceover yeah. guys. I feel like Sounds I've heard like that Robert guy. Robert Cooper wrote this script. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the greatest <laughs> show ever. I feel like I've heard that guy do like Scooby Doo. Ever and ever, like, forever and ever and ever. This and ever. summer on Nickelodeon, <laughs> Shaggy had a shave. <laughs> Seth is life. Seth is happiness. Seth is almighty. Yeah, I actually quite like the way that uh, that Sam sold that. I know she was under that under that spell, but mm. like she was oh, me lying. Too. Eyes up, and, and oh, the other two. Oh, I'm like, have O'Neill, have I forgotten that have O'Neill and, and Jackson, they not yet under the, the yeah. spell yet because yeah, they didn't they look like they were selling it. it. She's like, like they were reluctant. please have sex with me, please have sex yeah. with me. Yeah. Like, I'm your latest follower. And he's just like, who are you? Oh, you've brought yeah. the Jolana thing in here, you know, piss off. Mm. Like, yeah, you're yeah, tainted. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't want some dirty toker's leftovers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's what the brainwashing was called because Jacob said, oh, it's similar to Hathor's except much more mm. potent. It's called Nishta. Yeah. And he biological doesn't, he doesn't com- need to compound. breathe it on people and yeah, do, like and yeah. do poison ivy. I can't believe they all turned into eunuchs. I missed that the first time. I f- yeah, I feel like that was the peril of them going in there. It's like Carter gets raped, the guys get their junk cut off. Yeah. Like that's the per- that's the peril for them to go in there. Yeah. Aside from that they're going up against Yeah, like, like, there's some goal. dark shit and it's just sort of like, oh it happens, but I mean look at this yeah. cool. Like gas Gee, and we, stuff. Remember how much you love that from yeah. Apple? We've got earpieces that shock you into not being brainwashed anymore. That was so dumb. As yeah. if they wouldn't have seen those <laughs> when they took all their clothes. I mean, he, li- was... he literally grabbed Carter's head yeah. and turned it around like, Oh, he's gonna see it. Oh, wait, he didn't. No, yeah. What? He's full no. dumb. Do you reckon How have he lasted five thousand years? Like <laughs> this is yeah, background <laughs> check, uh, it all works out. Ah, uh, poor Seth. Anyway. The episode, yeah, not the Yeah, that was it was good. I re- I did like watching it again, even though I wasn't looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, I think because it's it's been I always skip it, so it's been so long since I've seen it. It was almost like watching a fresh episode yeah. to a degree because it's yeah. like I totally forgot Jacob was in this episode. And I was like, yeah. oh, and then I've always liked to see Jacob. I'm like, I know Reese hates him. <laughs> I was alright in this episode. Selmac's pretty awesome. Yeah, so oh, he's like cool. Jack's just giving old mate shit. <laughs> yeah, and he did not. Jacob's care. like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even, he's the boss. I don't even. <laughs> he rules the roost around here. He doesn't even go here. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Like the president says that Jack is the boss, and he's like, well, he's a general. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll tell you what, uh, come the end of the episode when we get to uh, Sam's brother that we never see again, that kid really trusts an old man that she's never met before as far as we know, or at least hasn't seen, because he asked Sam earlier in the episode, how long since you've seen your brother? And she said, oh, geez, probably not since his kids were born. So Mm. I'm guessing that means she has seen him more recently than than Jacob has. So Jacob shows up, cuddles him. He hugs him back saying, yeah, you know what? I do miss your dad. Let's <laughs> go and talk about the fact we were fighting for some stupid reason. He bends down, picks up this beautiful young girl who's smiley and wrapping her arms around. He's yeah. like, Sam, check Mate. this out. Smiling. I'm like, that doesn't happen. There are, no new- there are newborn puppies that are more suspicious than that little girl was. Yeah. 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 Hey, uh, who usually does the uh, Harry Mailbag intro? That'd be Reese. He does all the um, intros. <laughs> <He> does- <laughs> it's time for, for the, the Get, get Into, into Gate. Geek. Uh, get into Harry, gate. Harry, mailbag. Bag, you say monthly. Harry, I say mailbag. Uh, Start again. Hang no, on, it's hang on. I'll edit this out. Hang <laughs> no, on, go good. again. It's time for the get into gate. Harry, mailbag, mailbag. monthly. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think sometimes because we did miss last week. Uh, <laughs> I do want to get this in quick. We are running short of time, but I want to get in uh, Ashley O, who has written in actually a lot of trivia and stuff, which uh, we, I do really appreciate. Some of it though is going much further, even talking about continuum stuff. Right. And so I don't want to bring that up because of Reese, but some very detailed, uh, lovingly sent trivia and uh, and information from Ash, which I do yeah. appreciate. But uh, they've also also uh, written in their season rankings off the back of our season finale chat a couple of weeks oh. ago. So I might just even burn through uh, Ash's top three and bottom three. Yeah. Um, nice. Top one, fifth race, Thank which you. I think was ours, yes. Well done, that's Number two, 1969. Oh, you're doing the list backwards, mate. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I should have. Oh, you always, you know. Kate. 
Hey, oh, Richie. He just gave it all up. He gave it all up for the start. Anyway, like, cut. Next one. Where are we going to go? Like, where do we go to now? Like, oh, I'm, you know, sorry, down, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I've lo- you've lost my interest I'll now. Do yeah. I'll do it better exciting. for the bottom three. What else is okay. boring? <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> I wish this was a phone call so I could hang up. <laughs> oh, you got faded out. And Serpent Slayer. <laughs> bottom yeah. three. Bottom three. I'll give mm. you the... Third, third worst, worst first <laughs> out of oh, mind. Good. So our worst episode mm. was ah. Ash's third worst. Yeah. The uh, second worst was the Gamekeeper, Ooh. which I think featured in our bottom. It was seven. all in our bottom. No, I mean, it was in my middle. Oh. Middle. It was like no, yeah. it was like yeah, bottom yeah. of the middle, top of the bottom. Yeah, that's sort of, that's sort of one. So it was like number. The Gamekeeper number. dude was annoying. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And Ash's worst of uh, season two was one false step. Uh, describing it as naked singing alien six hours from the gate. That is all. Six f***ing hours just to screw around with plugged up aliens and plants that give you headaches. So thanks to Ashley O for that. Uh, a regular uh, writer. A uh, regular uh, hairy mailbagger, as yeah, it were. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ash. Ash. Ash, Ash the hairy can you, mailbag. Can you do us one favour, Ash? Can you tell us if you're male or female? Ash is a bloke. All right. Yeah. Which is interesting because your fiance is named Ash. Yeah. Oh, She's yeah. a bloke. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't Hand yourself in a corner there, <laughs> guys, 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 don't tell her I said that. <laughs> she doesn't listen, so she won't hear it. <laughs> She'll beat the crap out of you. Yeah. Oh, and you voted no. Yeah. <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I f***ing time with that brush, mate. <laughs> Uh, okay, and also um, got a an email from Justin uh, on getintogate at gmail.com. He's just found the podcast. Uh, I recently discovered your podcast because of the launch of Stargate Command, which is obviously, you know, bringing together Stargate fans as something, some new from content. all over the galaxy. Or, I decided to start a rewatch of Stargate and uh, see if there are any rewatch podcasts out there. Found a couple. After listening to the first couple of yours, I decided I would binge watch the show and listen to all your Whoa. back episodes. You guys are really funny, guys. Hey. Oh, oh, yeah, shit. Oh. Oh, thanks, Mum. I mean, Justin. We, no, we think so. Justin. <laughs> we think now, so. look, this is where I think it is fake. I want to say that Maddie wrote this in. I especially <laughs> love the comparisons to Star Trek. No Thank one you. said that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first it was Gilmore Girls. Yeah. And yeah. Aaron, Aaron wrote Trek. in and said, Gilmore Girls, are you making these All people up? How many social so- media accounts do you have, Maddie? <laughs> guys, you need to understand, you guys may be geeks, but I'm a nerd. Mm. And mm. these are my fellow nerds. These are my people. These are my people. <laughs> my peeps. Well, now, Justin I, says... I just want to show you, like, that in a in a season two scenario, that's where I would pull out the phone and have my hip hop oh. alarm go off. I've retired it. I've retired my well, sound bites for season three. Something okay? positive. Jesus. So I just, you know, you know what? Growth. I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> I completely understand the urge to compare two of the greatest sci-fi franchises of all time. So yes. there you go, Matty. Thank well you, done. Justin. Star Although Wars he still and does. Stargate. Yes, thank you. It's good, good to know I've got some people <laughs> on my side. He still does only get three mentions per episode. Yeah, so, and it's uh, going to get harder lot. and harder as the episodes go on because there's a well, lot. There's a lot. It's of already references. pretty hard. Oh, hang on, hang on. My only problem is, oh Jesus! Oh, Here we go. No, in the last week and a half, I've listened to most of your gate episodes. I'm almost caught up, so I have to decide. Am I going to slow down my rewatch of the show and watch along with you or keep going at my current pace because he's been binging? Ooh. Opinions. I mean, I'm going to come at this from a real, like, just general sense. I mean, mm. you know, not holding any bias towards any argument. I'd probably say just keep listening to us and watch it with us. I mean, <laughs> Absolutely. that seems fair mm. to everybody. Well, I mean, you know, if we if we miss a week, you know, that's that's going to put, that's, you know, you know, it means he gets to watch no no Stargate that week. So I feel like, you know, watch ahead. Watch That's half, a lot of pressure on our shoulders. Yeah, watch, watch you know, half a season ahead or something like that. But, you know, if you get too oh, far ahead. You know what? For me, I just say binge watch and then go mm. back and watch them again. Yeah. yeah. I watched well, seven th- seasons of Game of Thrones in two weeks, so I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Do back. you have a f- job, mate? <laughs> How much two wow. kids are yours? Hey, I did, I did the same. Oh, I don't have, I don't, yeah, I don't have a full-time job. Or, it probably or, or wasn't kids, two weeks, but, but since <laughs> the finishing of season seven, yeah. I've right. rewatched the whole thing. Um, well, I guess in also a way, you know, Justin might also be wanting to really just go through, especially the early episodes in the lead up to Origins. So maybe it is worth just binging the whole lot mm. so you're all over it. Yeah. And then, well, he said that. He said, even if Stargate Origins ends up sucking, at least it will have managed to reignite my Stargate fandom and lead me to discover amazing Stargate we'll podcasts. So, oh, oh stop know, it. Stop no, it. And he also said he's going to leave us a five-star review. Stop it. Whee! Stop it, stop Justin. It. Uh, from Washington around. State, actually. So, uh, hello. Yeah. Well across the ditch. Like, Capitals. Hey. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Panhandle. I don't know if that's... I don't know. Is it... <laughs> 
America. That'll do. Yeah. That's generic. That's, that works. Uh, White House. Uh, my dad's American. <laughs> But, no, mean, he really he is. He really is. No, yeah. I know. <laughs> no. It's also a Seinfeld reference. It's funny. <laughs> so thank you to everyone uh, who continues to um, donate to the uh, Harry Mailbag. That is gate at gmail.com. You can worse. also uh, drop us a line on the social pages, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Comment uh, on any of our posts or send us a message. Uh, we'll give you a shout out. If you've got some Stargate love, you want to let us know any information, trivia, all that sort of stuff for Reese. You know, mm. share your love if you're watching it for the first time. So No spoilers. No spoilers. Hashtag no spoilers. And uh, leave an iTunes review. Yeah, that oh, is yeah. helping to spread uh, spread the word of uh, of get into gate to uh, other Stargate fans around there, which is cool because we yeah. want to talk to as many Stargate fans as we can. So, well, uh, thanks to everyone who's already doing that on iTunes. Personally, you can find me Mitch underscore Lewis on Twitter and Instagram. Maddie at High Pitch Maddie on Instagram. Brennan at the Brennan Gibson on Instagram. Hell yeah, Reese. I'm at the Flying Gibson on Instagram. I've also got a Facebook page happening now, guys. Oh, oh no. Celebrity no. social media slut traveler. Is that what it's called? <laughs> no, that wasn't yes, no. yes. right. Yeah, uh, that, no, that's my second one. Okay, that's my catfishing one. <laughs> <laughs> no, still at the flying. You're Gibson. so busy. Yeah, I've, well, I'm not. That's why I've got time to start a <laughs> Facebook page. Really, so many of them. I'm it? also on Twitter as well, which I don't use too much. So if you want to get, get jump it. on there, yeah. Until next week, where we are talking episode three of season three, fair game with the oh, return. Fair game? Best suck of the sav. Hey, Brennan, <laughs> give him a fair game because it's Robert C. Cooper. Oh, oh. Get into geek.com.